prepare. Uh, uh, use this link to github.com slash error slash defcon5 and uh, uh, find requirements for this workshop. You need Linux, uh, browser with MetaMask, and installed uh, IPFS client. For other people, you just can watch what will be happening on this screen, and I hope you will be interested in those. Okay, so uh, uh, we will start. Um, my name is Sergey Onchakov. This is Alexander Kopenkin. We are core developers of Ergonomics Network Project. And uh, in the next 45 minutes, we will, uh, we will sh give you a short introduction in the history of our experiments because we started from 2015 with our first experiments. After that, we will show you a live demo of installation process and we will try to do together first steps uh, to uh, connect you with the simulation of lunar workers to build moon base. And the last time, we will try to, uh, to do everything what we need in our scenario to build moon base before the conflict. So for the start, uh, a little bit about us. I uh, was involved in cryptocurrency projects eight years ago, uh, but from 2014 I started working only with Ethereum ideas. And in 2015 I met Alexander and we focused only on using Ethereum in robotics fields with idea uh, how we can control robotics under a virtual computer. Because Ethereum, for us, it's the first decentralized world computer. And if it's a computer, we can use it to control robotics in the physical world. So, uh, this is our first experiment in winter 2015. It's a funny video, so I recommend you uh, scan this QR code and find two minutes to watch it. It was a Russian winter, uh, uh, and you can see Alexander sit on the chair in the center of the field and create first ever uh, smart contract between human and machine. Uh, after that, we spent around three years with a different type of RNGs where we used Ethereum to control robotics. We uh, use water drones flying drones, self-driving car simulations, sensors, industrial manipulators, and uh, modeling of lights out factories under computer control. And in result of that, we prepare ergonomics platforms. It means we don't only prepare experiments and push out our source code on GitHub. We tried to build common framework for engineers who are interested to use Ethereum on robotics fields. So if you want to connect sensors, drones, um, some, o some OPC or services from industrial uh, standards, you can use what we have now on GitHub. So, it means Robonomics is the first open source platform which you can use to connect your robotics under Ethereum control. And in our vision, it's important today because, you know, in many uh, countries you, s you see um, s how speakers say about future of the cities, about smart cities. And in many cases, uh, they show the same picture, but in this place they show cloud-based systems. So like a different robots under cloud, Amazon Cloud, Google Cloud. So in our vision we can use this the technology for them. Not to connect small sensors, but in robotics maybe you know we have a, 
a definition for cyber physical systems. It's a much more complex system, so I can not a drone, but a drone based. Not a sensor, but a sensor networks. Not a one industrial manipulator, but smart factory. So it means you don't need a blockchain or smart contract to send signal from one hand to other hand. But when we have a communication between self-driving car and some solar panel, a gas station or something like that, you have economical communication with the technical details between two corporations or between physical um, uh, equipment and companies. And in these cases, in our opinion, Ethereum computer can be interesting. So, uh, now I give uh, uh, quicker to Alexander and he will give you introduction on our GitHub more. Thanks, Sergey. Hello, everyone. My name is Alex. I'm a uh, head of uh, IRL Programmers. And if you will have any technical questions, please ask me. And I will explain uh, details of Robonomics technical works. Uh, so let's uh, try to me to explain our GitHub structure. How many developers here? Please take your hands. Uh, not, not so many. I'm great. <laughs> so many people. <laughs> yes. So uh, Rabanox network is a little bit complex thing, and uh, let me try to explain. Uh, a good point for. Beginner is an AR repository that has um, great documentation and you can try to learn more about the Economics Network from that. It's a Linux distribution that contains uh, so many packages for Linux and for robotic system that you can connect with your robot and uh, try uh, going over tutorials. If you are a decentralized application developer, Let's uh, try to look into Robonomics.js library that helps uh, to integrate your decentralized application with Robonomics network. And um, all our development project is open source and you can find it in our GitHub repository. Let's try to start the game. The first word we need is uh, open or on five uh, repo in the IRLab repository. You can take a photo of the QR code and uh, start to go over readme instructions. How many people uh, will try to go? I think two or three. Four. Okay. Uh, so Alexander will work with laptop and I will try to dis give some description. Uh, for what he will do now. Okay, so, first of all, we, on the first step, uh, you can open just a serialized application, what we prepared for this workshop. It's a moon based statistics. And if you open this link, What you can find here? Uh, we think uh, today we will try to build Moonbase with three types of work. First is the construction work, so uh, on the next step you will uh, download uh, Lunar Worker simulation and you will, cho you will choose, select what type of work you want to do on Moon. Construction work like support work or it's very important for any conference or prepare bravery work. So uh, to understand what is uh, on the next slides, go to the next step and download this lunar worker. Um, it's around five megabytes and on the next step you can open the terminal. So, let's try. 
Yeah, and now, so if you try to um, launch Uno worker without any options, you will you will see um, message about you missing options uh, where you can choose construction life or bravery. So uh, I think you understand that it's uh, one of the options that we uh, what we saw before. So you can select, for example, uh, life suffer for and enter and here is you will see your robot simulation id what will be uh, needed to for communication between your uh, application and uh, robot simulation so uh, now you need on the next step open other application it's a standard robonomics network application where you can send signal from your uh, site to robot and we use Ethereum mainnet but you don't need to spend ethers you just need sign message with your key from in MetaMask you need to uh, you need select program model for to, uh, for selected before uh, type of work put here and put here your robot ID and just push broadcast signal button as you see you need to sign message maybe you used before zero x or something like other projects where you use metamask not for send transaction but sign messages and after you push button broadcast signal and sign message, you will find in terminal information like here. Um, for for example, your simulation will will see uh, information from you and send uh, a signal from their side. And after some time. Uh, you will see on other scan transaction and it means uh, robonomics network providers catch information from your side from robotics side and send transaction to ethereum network for to uh, for launching uh, robotics so uh, if we go back to statistics, we will find one executed uh, one executed program. So, in this workshop, we uh, advise you to try doing that and uh, try to do uh, 20 times construction work, 10 times life support work, and five times brain variable. And this is, uh, I think, simple, uh, simple task, but you you can try it and understand how you can use robotics uh, under Ethereum control, where users don't need to guess others to get for guess, where uh, uh, your signal will be. Uh, collected from with the urbanomics network providers and providers will be, uh, will send transaction to Ethereum network to uh, for launch uh, your robotics so yeah so we will try to do it sometimes now and try to it doesn't work with things yeah, uh, I can't execute the binary <laughs> Is a Mac. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you virtual box. Yeah. Well, we have a virtual box. Don't count on that. Because we don't have a binary for Mac, only for Linux. <laughs> okay, so it's a, it's a demonstration how. Uh, is worth urbanomics network 
it's a second layer solution where you can just sign message uh, from MetaMask and from the robotic side and our providers can set all this information in the Ethereum blockchain after uh, that uh, it's been triggered for robotics to do in some programs which we store in high balance. So Why did you choose Ethereum and not IOTA? Because IOTA is only um, uh, it's only solution for payments between machines. Yeah, it's not a solution for uh, for using um, to if you need to send program from user side to uh, to uh, robotic side, you will not enough IOTA because they don't have a smart contract. They just only have a DAC as a proof of payments. Uh, yeah, and second is uh, we think uh, IoT is not a computer. Uh, uh, for us, it's very important to uh, try these experiments with the Turing complete or something like that. Uh, uh, solutions uh, with the smart contracts or so on, or with the smart contracts because. We have a more opportunity to do something more complex than a simple machine-to-machine -machine payments. Okay, so this design comparing it to the communication between the satellites or the real machinery that we are sending to space. In comparison, right now there is no secure connection, or whatever security we have is pretty low. And with this, it could be much better. Yeah, because uh, we don't use only Ethereum, as you can see. On this part of IPFS. it's IPFS. So when you store program in IPFS, and from user side you sign message where you say I can pay this ERC20 tokens for execute and ask execute some with this hash. And from other side, robotics engineers say my robot can can execute this, this, and this type of. Uh, job, they can hear in IBFS publisher subscriber layer information about signing uh, uh, demand from users for execution some pro uh, some programs. And in these cases, you don't have any security risk because first you cannot change programs what you want to deliver to uh, uh, to robotic side. Second is you don't have a single point of fire like in cloud-based system. It means uh, your your robot controlled by Ethereum and IPFS its place where he can be ensured that he download program exactly what he can do. So in case you want to cancel a command, sorry? In case you want to cancel a command or reverse the actions that you just program, um, is it possible or uh, in some cases for example car sharing Example: How car sharing now work? You have application. You try to find some car. You just uh, you push button, uh, uh, orders this car. In, uh, and what happened after that? Uh, your signal go to cloud. Cloud uh, identify you and send transaction to car. With Ethereum and Rabana Mesh Network, how it's going to work? You will send a signed message to network. Car will be sent offer for the smart contract will be created, and after that car will be know your account, and you can just go to car and send in mesh network any messages from your key. So it means uh, you can, can interact with uh, different type of robotics, not only in uh, what you. Um, Put in if uh, Ethereum smart contract. In Ethereum smart contract, you can put uh, basic uh, requirements for interaction. So, like uh, when smart contracts uh, created, uh, user can doing this, this, and these functions. But these functions will be work from uh, in mesh networks from just signed message. So, if you need cancel program. You need to use 
uh, like what I said now. If you just need to send a uh, transaction where you don't want to have opportunity to cancel this, and for example, I don't think you will have opportunity to cancel your drone delivery services um, in the two or five minutes period from one uh, in closest um, uh, distance, for example. So in these cases, you just can push with GPS coordinates in smartphone, and it will be enough. But if you want to rent a drone and use it in one day period, you just can create smart contract, be owner of this uh, drone, but drone will understand, no, uh, this account, my owner, only one day, and he have uh, some functions in this day, and our functions can be used from uh, direct communication without blockchain. It's, uh, uh, for example, uh, you can find Smart Factory as a service, it's a project uh, uh, from KUKA, and uh, you, will, you can find a picture where someone with a tablet try to uh, send some uh, comments for manipulators, for other type uh, equipment. But this equipment, is, uh, he is not a owner of this equipment. It's, um, for example, Smart Factory is a service, like a robot is a service. Uh, industrial um, pr uh, comp uh, factory can use uh, robotics uh, from uh, producers, so like KUKA can send their robots to factory, but factory can uh, cannot uh, buy this uh, this robots, but only rent. In these cases, you need to give opportunity to communicate with this robot, but when agreement exists, so like uh, if factory send payment transaction to KUKA, you have options to use this robot. What part of uh, computation are you doing on chip? Sorry. What part of the computation are you doing on chain? Uh, we have one problem now, uh, and it's uh, I think it's a very popular problem. If you want to use uh, ergonomics network uh, on robotics fields today, your transaction cost will be around one dollar fifty cents, and it's a big uh, price. Uh, in many, 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 many cases. So before sharding, before we will see less price of gas, uh, we I think we will don't have cases in car sharing, for example, because if each transaction in car sharing will cost around one dollar, it's a, not a good and not a good price. After the, after price will be down uh, around five cents. I see we will not have a big computer. Like, what part of the computation are you doing on? Ah, computation. Yeah, so I, I send out like. Uh, uh, we just we store in smart contract only address of user, okay. address of robots, and hash of program in IPFS. Yeah, uh, just to take your example, you talked about using a drone. Yeah. Uh, so Ethereum, uh, transaction in Ethereum, you have 15 seconds block time. Uh, so like, how do you solve the latency issue in case of like when you send, when you just send multiple signals? For, for us, it's not a problem. Uh, latency is not a problem because you, in our cases, you, as I said before, you don't use Ethereum to send signal from one hand to other hand. Okay. So it means. Uh, you need only send transaction one time when you order drone delivery service. And to order drone delivery service, you can wait one minute, so, for example. But after that, of course, when drone in flight, he cannot use Ethereum as a place for computation to find best role for, for, uh, for his movie. So it means uh, you, you can use uh, Ethereum computer for communication between humans and machines or between machines in order when you have economical communication between two sides. When you have, want to order some 
goods from factory or you want to uh, have a subscription for sensor networks data, for example, uh, application in your phone to have uh, some information about weather in your city from sensors network. You can just create one uh, smart contracts in months and after that you will have all information without any computation in Ethereum. Our computation happened on the robotic side after, uh, after robots download information from IPFS. Okay. Um, so have you done that only as a game, or have you actually thought of how to bring that technology into space? No, it's only game because uh, for we are guys from robotics, but not from space industry. Uh, but uh, uh, and we never tried to think more about space problems, how Ethereum can be interesting, in but. At the same time, I think you understand that if we start thinking about lunar base, Mars bases, in these cases, uh, uh, we cannot use real-time systems. And using using some like a blockchain with the blocks of information, I think it's, it can be interesting. But I never find any articles, scientific papers about how we can use blockchain in space uh, industry, only one project like uh, DAO on Aragon to collect money for some <laughs> space projects. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Yeah, that was yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, Are there any commercial interests uh, in the world, like, for example, experimenting with decentralized fleets or uh, uh, some positive? One of the most interesting cases, what we found, uh, with uh, Ethereum computer and uh, robotics, now it's uh, using sensor networks, environmental analysis sensor networks, to use this information as a base base for green finance markets. For example, carbon credit markets. We have a, we worked the last three years with the project on carbon credit markets. I was two times in the United Nations conference around climate change with a project where we show how you can use IoT devices, uh, information uh, to issue carbon credits. So like... Uh, you have you have yeah, yeah. Chosen product? No, no, no. We have a other project with name DAO I Sorry, DAO? DAO IPCI, IPCI.io project. So it means, uh, and one other case is interesting, uh, smart building. Today in some yeah. places in the world you can, you can choose what type of energy you want to use, green energy or standard energy. Um, but with blockchain technology, with what we showed before, if we have a green assets, carbon credits inside blockchain, and if we have IoT systems in smart building because it's smart building, smart building can use an upsetting mechanism with a blockchain, with a transparency, without humans. It's one of the other market what we think. Uh, next one, it's a robot as a service. Robot as a service, uh, as I said before, it's a case when where we have uh, two parties. First, it's a, a vendor of robotics. Second, is a factory who use this robotics. And all of these uh, parties don't have a trust to. So, like, uh, because factory should pay for our operations of these industrial robots. Uh, but at the same time, they need to uh, be sure the quantity of this operation, exactly what they expect. So they need some way to distribute the system where vendor and factory have the same system. And uh, they can use smart, smart contracts to control this robotics system. It's 
much more easy than try to build the same without the theorem. You started by talking about like differentiation between IOTA being like a financial or like a sort of payments network, and uh, you're utilizing the theory of more as like business logic and so on. Yeah. Um, uh, isn't the initiator also in the case of business logic most of the time an economic uh, interaction? So yeah. like, when I'm wondering something, there is like a payment being made, and that suffices as like a trigger for the robot yeah, process. But, yeah, but in financial transaction, you need to put technical details. You don't enough on the, for example, you have a vending machine. So where, where I'm located has to be sent to the robot and stuff like that. You, you need just. Uh, hash of the, yeah, yeah. So it's not enough to pay to a robot because for, for me it's my basic idea before Ethereum was alive. Bitcoin is not only first global financial institution. For me it's first money for robots. Because before Bitcoin you cannot go to a bank and say here's my robot operating the bank account. But now you don't need to ask anyone for that. Your robot can earn money and send this production as an owner of this product. It's some sophisticated, some philosophy, but it can happen. We don't need the government's approval for that. Robots can have a wallet now, but wallets not enough. Smart contracts is a really good way to use robotics as a service, because now we are on the next industrial revolution where we don't want to use robotics as a tool want to use robotics as a service in city. So if we try to use robotics as a service, we need a high level uh, communication between humans and machine from you, our application. Do you think it also like helps with the trust issue? And we you if of course and with the trust you have uh, many uh, problems as I said in robot as a service system. When we have a supply chain information transparency in, in, in YouTube options is very important for for example uh, digital passports many uh, productions now say we can issue digital passports but where they keep them in cloud based systems they can change information with this passport in any time but if factory will put data about passport in blockchain they never can change this information and it can create additional value for, for products. But you can create a new information you can compare the previous information. Yeah. Yeah. So you just uh, one last question from what I said. Uh, what is the model, business model in terms of uh, for, as far as problem extent what is As I uh, showed before, uh, you don't pay others from Decentralized application. Um, and from robotic side, they don't have, uh, you don't need to have others too. Uh, Urbanomics network uh, providers send transaction and spend others. But uh, these providers ask you uh, Urbanomics tokens. It's like system. So like, uh, you, if you are startup in smart city concepts or IoT uh, concepts. You want to use Ethereum computer, you can create an ergonomics solution where your customers will never pay anything other than your tokens, your payment balance, something like that. But your robots, your vending machines, your cars or other, other uh, systems will pay uh, ergonomics tokens to pay for gas from from our uh, from our side. Our yeah, I have a personal uh, question, but how do you find yourself? Uh, first of all, first two years we we used our own money because as you understand I many times in blockchain community I was uh, I spent my Bitcoin in ICO if you will. We, and we was one of the first miners of Ethereum in the first day. Uh, so I think we, we earned around 100 others in the 3rd of July of 2015. So it was a very good time. Uh, and in 2015 we did the first stage of initial coin offering. We collect 5,000 others 
and spend all this money to do this platform, but not so many uh, money for public relations and to doing some marketing. Now we are trying to, to speak with our Russian English without, without good marketing guys. We need diversity, so it's okay. <laughs> So you're relying on a uh, sort of demand for the token uh, as your business model uh, network. Model. Uh, it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think it's defensible? Like you know, everything you're building is open source, right? So yeah. Like, yeah. Someone can just yeah, but I think not so many people can fork what we did. So like because it's complicated. You should be robotics and if you don't go chain at the same time. Uh, we now don't have uh, many strong developers in Ethereum, but strong developers in Ethereum and in robotics at the same time. No. I don't know um, many teams. Yes, but in the next two or three years, I think it's going to be happening. So we don't have uh, much more time to be most popular. So we try. Yeah, I was going to say, give it a couple of years, because back in the States, like, Robotics clubs are all the rage with the young kids, uh, so I imagine there will be a, a fresh crop of uh, folks incredibly interested in that field that uh, you could probably dissuade. Uh, we decide to, for, for example, um, we have a many. Uh, we spend a lot of time with academia. Uh, job. Uh, we have articles. Uh, scientific papers, and we think uh, for us most interesting to prepare educational courses for Coursera or Edix or other places where we can find clever guys. For example, Dan Weirmer or other guys collect one billion dollars to spend for startups. But what happened when he say, "I have uh, one billion for startups"? You will, you will try to defend from cheaters and other guys who can earn your money. But when you have a good technologies and you have a good education, uh, academic background, you can uh, prepare educational courses and find clever guys. There are engineers who just want to know something new. And it's, it's some, something like uh, dream from our side, but I, I hope it can. Because one player engineer cost one thousand other engineers. So thank you. So thank you for your. Time.